If you know anyone that wants to be an artist, whether it's being a musician, filmmaker, animator, photographer, or whatever else, show them this video because it might help them out. Or at least just tell them some of the things I'm about to say. I've been meaning to make this for a long time and I think it's worth making while I keep working on the Lil Peep documentary. I made a 40 minute documentary on XXXTentacion, yet I didn't really go into detail on why I connected with him. The reason why he's so important to me was because we have a similar perspective on creativity. Out of all the musicians and filmmakers I've watched and listened to over the years, I would say I felt the closest connection to X because he had philosophies that I follow quite strongly and if you want to make content I think there's some valuable information to take from this. This is five things that XXXTentacion taught me about creativity. So let's start from the beginning. There's a filmmaker called Jim Jarmusch. I've never seen any of his films but he said something that I think will resonate with any person that wants to make something. Nothing is original. Steal from anywhere that resonates with inspiration or fuels your imagination. Devour old films, new films, music, books, paintings, photographs, poems, dreams, random conversations, architecture, bridges, street signs, trees, clouds, bodies of water, light and shadows. Select things to steal from that speak directly to your soul. If you do this, your work and theft will be authentic. Authenticity is invaluable, originality is non-existent. And don't bother concealing your thievery. Celebrate it if you feel like it. Some of the most creative artists have a wide range of influences. Quentin Tarantino saw thousands of movies and the inspiration he got from them combined with his own creative genius led to him making some of the best movies to come out in the past few decades. And as for XXXTentacion, he listened to all kinds of music and he always wanted to explore different kinds of genres of the music he made. You should always aim to expand your horizons and that goes beyond art. Look up true stories, politics, human psychology, spirituality, religion, and as X would say, read the laws of the universe. While the genres that X was interested in gave him a unique sound, it was the other aspects of humanity and culture, along with his past experiences, that gave him topics to talk about. The music video for Sad is a perfect example of this because it reflects on all of that and more. The music video plays out a lot more like a short film, which leads to my second point. Think outside the box. Structures and formulas aren't a bad thing. They exist because they work in their respective mediums, but sticking to a formula beat by beat can lead to predictability and lack of originality. I've listened to a lot of rap music over the years, but the first time I listened to X was for the song I'm Sipping Tea in Your Hood, and it was completely different from anything I heard before. X made music that felt like an accurate reflection of his mind which meant using unconventional techniques like distorting his music and look at me, he made a song called Kill Me which was recorded from the phone call he had while he was in jail and the audio from that was edited with an instrumental and became a song. He sampled the sound from his BMW for the song Sad and he sampled the audio of one of his fights for young brats. Whether you're using microphones, paper, cameras, pencils, whatever else, all these things are tools. They follow the rules that they were built for but the human mind can use those tools in so many different ways. My reaction videos are easily the most creative videos on my channel because I would use a random voiceover to connect the clips together, music to add to the tone of what's happening on screen, and other footage to give a structured feel to raw footage that actually lacks structure when I was filming it. If I never made those reaction videos, the documentary I did on X wouldn't have been as good as it was, so you should aim to find unique methods of trying to improve your skills. Going back to my last point, you should consume a lot of art, and I would like to add that you should consume art that's made from different countries. That means you should watch foreign films, listen to foreign music. As far as creativity goes, the best creative of content usually comes from countries like Japan and South Korea. Anime is really creative and so are Japanese films like Love Exposure, which is four hours long but it's a great movie that's worth checking out. In South Korea they make amazing revenge films like Old Boy and I Saw the Devil, but they also make unique films like I'm a Cyborg but that's okay. The internet has given a voice to independent creators and it's also given people the chance to access anything for inspiration, even if it's from another country, so there's no reason why you can't broaden your horizons. The more influences you have from all sorts of areas, the more likely you'll make unique content because you're not drawing inspiration from one place, you're drawing inspiration from all the content you've consumed over the years, and you should always understand the power of the medium you're working on. A book stimulates the mind because the reader is forced to visualise the words on the page. You can write down a lot more information, which is harder to pull off in movies because it would just be expositional, whereas a book doesn't have to deal with that issue as it makes sense in book form. Music is a very intimate medium because a song can touch a soul. It's the medium where the artist has the power to talk to you, and using certain kinds of instruments and sound effects, combined with lyrics about whatever subject, a song can make you feel some type of way. You feel connected to the person who made the song, which is why X was an important person to so many people. If he never made music and worked on other mediums like films instead, he wouldn't have affected as many people. There's a purity behind music because it's a reflection on what's going on
going on in your mind, but you can feel it because there's a sound to it, as opposed to just words on a page, which is great in its own way, but music can do a lot more. And if you're a person who knows deep down in their heart that they're supposed to make music or supposed to make movies, you're going to do it. And even if you don't reach an audience of millions, you'll still have some kind of self-fulfillment. I will say this though, know your limits. It only really applies towards film production. If you don't want to make something that looks cheap, understand what you have and make something good with them. Don't try and compete against Hollywood if you don't have the same resources that Hollywood has. Watch the music video for Bound 2 by Kanye West. The song itself is actually good, but the music video is cheap and tacky. I know that's what the video was going for, but there are certain music videos that use green screen and try to do things that they're clearly not skilled for. Out of respect, I'm not going to mention any real examples, but still, start small, do something simple, and develop your craft. If you watch the earliest uploads from your favorite YouTubers, it's almost always a case where they started off making simple content, and as they kept on making new projects, they improved and went on to become the creators that you know and love today. XXX Tentacion may have been ambitious, but he knew what he was doing and didn't make something that he couldn't pull off. To be honest, I don't have an example of X showing that he knew his limits, but I do have a great point to bring up that he didn't let his limits prevent him from making music, which leads to my final point, make stuff. X didn't have the best equipment when he started making music. He was rapping in a Blue Snowball microphone, which is the same microphone I'm using for this video. Usually I use an iPhone 5S to record the voiceover, which is what I used for Long Live X. Use the tools you have to make stuff. Even if you would rather use something a lot more professional, it's all about the content itself at the end of the day. If you have an iPhone or any phone that's got a decent camera or built-in microphone, use it if you don't have a standard camera or microphone. All the software I use to make my videos is free. I use DaVinci Resolve for video editing, GIMP and Paint.net for image editing, and Audacity for audio editing. The one thing I recommend you get that's expensive but worth the money is a really good PC or laptop for editing because programs like DaVinci Resolve require powerful systems. If you already have them, great. If not, make videos of editing software you can download on phone. I haven't edited with a phone before and I don't know how much you can really do but the point is find a way to make content. If you have no idea what to make, make random shit. Honestly it works. If you watch my older videos you'll see that I've made so many random videos that make no sense and have no point but I made them because I considered it stupid fun plus it gave me the chance to learn more about filmmaking. I went from making random videos to videos of some kind of meaning but all the experience I acquired over the years led me to making Long Live X. At some point I want to make a documentary on the person that inspired me to make YouTube videos but for now I'm still working on the Lil Peep documentary. As an update for what's been going on, I've finished editing all the footage for the interviews and I've written about half of the script. I still have a long way to go, but it should come out in September or in October at the very latest. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something from it. Take care, Fulu, and I hope you have a bad morning. <laughs>